Hi, I'm John Rush, uh, president of David Lawrence Rare Coins. So John, as a fellow Virginian, I'm always interested in uh, seeing what you guys have to offer. Uh, you have the king of coins in your uh, case. Well, we're, we're proud to buy this $18.95 and graded by NGC as a Proof 66 Cameo from a longtime customer, friend of ours. Um, and we've been offering it this week at the a a show and just kind of bought it with us as one of our uh, highlight coins we love this week. So. So what is it about the uh, Morgan dollar and the 1895 specifically that have caught generations of collectors' interest? Well, the 1895 dollar w was not minted in circulation strikes at the Philadelphia Mint in 1895. Um, so they, they did produce proof issues and a very limited mintage of them. And it's always been a very uh, popular issue for someone that wants to fill in the set with dates and mint marks. 1895 has long been the one proof that fits in the, every set that you can put together with, with Morgan Dollars. So John, as a proof in the absolute sense for the Morgan Dollar series, how does the 1895 rate? Well, there are 880 made, so it's it's not and it, it's not the most common date, but it's, it's also probably not the rarest date to find, but it's always been the most coveted date amongst collectors, whether it be for circulation strike sets or proof sets. And how does this issue usually come now that we're well over 130 years after it's striking? Well, you, you can find them in all grades. You can find impaired proofs that are damaged, everything from good details coins up to 67 or 68. So, I mean, you rarely find a flashy white example in, in 63 and higher, but on occasion you can, as is the 66 cameo. Cool. Thanks very much. Thank you, Charles. So Russ, usually when people think about proof-like and deep mirror proof-like coins, they're thinking about Morgan dollars, which is quite common to have that appearance for certain issues. Yeah. Not so much gold. But you have the largest circulating gold coin struck by the United States Mint in deep proof-like. How exceptional is this piece in your experience? Well, you're talking about the 1892 Double Eagle. And really, really amazingly exceptional. Uh, gold that has been polished off a of freshly polished dies when it was struck will come off as looking proof-like or deep mirrored proof-like. And uh, more often you find that NGC will attribute coins as proof-like or deep mirrored proof-like for gold denominations. This particular coin is really quite extraordinary. Uh, in 1892, it was a huge transitional year for, the, for coinage. The barber coinage was introduced the dime, the quarter, and the half dollar. And the San Francisco gold output was over the top. But the Philadelphia mint gold production was quite low. In fact, the double eagle, which is what we're talking about right now, only had a mintage of uh, 4,400 coins. 4,400 coins for the entire year, which made it a rarity in itself. Now, to answer your question about proof like and deep proof like, this had to, this coin is a graded 66 star deep mirrored proof like by NGC. In order to have that grade, this must have been the first coin that came off of the press. Absolutely the a presentation strike. And we're, we're, we're blessed enough to have it right now for sale at the fun show here in Fort Lauderdale. So, why would a coin like this with that, that type of finish survive to this day when Liberty 20s were hardly collected in uncirculated grades at the time, and $20 was quite a bit of money back in 1892. That's a good question, and let's let's give uh, let's give a nod to the collectors of the time because with a, such a small business strike mintage of 4,400 coins, and 1891 also was a very low mintage as well, so they could have been prepared for low mintage in 1892. Let's give that nod to them and going and taking coins perhaps from. Uh, the bank or even more kind of uh, interestingly from the mint itself and preserving them. And this coin obviously over a hundred plus years has never really seen any misuse or uh, problems. Maybe it went, uh, went into a coin cabinet covered with velvet and has a couple of hairlines which is why it's not a 67 grade but it was very well preserved. Literally splitting hairs at that point. I, I hate to say it, you know, 
while you were saying while I was saying it, I thought the same thing myself. So V, can you have a cool coin for me today? We do, Charles. It's a it's an 1880 $10 gold piece. Um, only 9,200 pieces made in that in that year at that mint, and this is the finest survivor. Uh, graded PCGS MS64. I think it's the finest by two or three points. Uh, acquired by our consigner in the late 1990s, and has decided to bring it uh, to market today because he was so happy with how we did with his uh, with his AU piece that that he sold in our last auction in November in Baltimore. And uh, when he brought this out, he, he brought it in on a Saturday to our office in New York, and he wanted me to be there. I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to make it, but he wanted to see my reaction when he put it on the table. And I was just flabbergasted to see such a fine survivor um, of this date. Uh, it's just, it's just mind blowing. I mean, all of my colleagues have looked at it and been, been just wowed by, by the quality, and that something like this survives. Um, so let's talk about quality for a second. If you collect modern coins. You'd see the grade of MS64 and you would think, well, that's not quite a gem. And, you know, there's sixes and sevens and eights out there. But that that's not the case, for first of all, for New Orleans coins. That's and secondly, you know, we're talking about, you know, a, a, a strike and a luster on that coin that... That, that looks like it, something unlike what you would expect. It, it's, it's amazing. I mean, these, these coins were not saved at that time, so this is just a, a random survivor, a lucky survivor. Uh, so we don't have that quality thing that we get with, say, the bags of Morgan dollars that, that have been released uh, through government and bank hoards over the last several decades. So to have to have a shot at something like this from the New, New Orleans Mint that you pointed out is just something really special. Even, even some of the later, more common New Orleans $10 gold pieces, the, the early 1900s issues, are very tough in, in, in this grade and gem condition. And, uh, you know, my colleagues, have, as I said, have just been wowed by this coin. And everyone's like, why, why isn't it a five and things? But yeah, I don't know why it's not a five. It, it's, just, yeah. it's just stupendous to look at. So, so this is a highly collectible series, plus, plus grade. What's the uh, estimated value? Good question. It's a, it's really a shot in the dark. I mean, the consigner is hoping for, for something over a hundred thousand dollars, and I think he, he very well uh, is going to get it. It's just I think it's going to create a lot of excitement. Uh, the omens, especially in ten early, uh, sorry, lib tens, have been doing very well in our auctions lately. So I have high hopes uh, that, that the consigner will, uh, will will get his desire, will get his wish. Well, good luck to you, and good luck to your consigner. Appreciate it. So Julian, I was walking by your booth and I saw that you had three very special coins that you had recently certified by NGC. And one of the things that I think makes it a little bit unusual in this day and age is uh, you decided to preserve a moment in the history of the hobby by keeping these in their original holders. These yeah, I, I, I did. I, uh, I thought about it. I mean, I knew about the Cox collection. It was a fabulous collection of uh, uh, and primarily American half dollars. And this was his collection, and he had all the coins put in these holders. And there's very few left in these holders. There are some in the Smithsonian Institution. But I said, rather than take them out of the holder, let's leave them in here. Let's preserve the history. I actually, there were four of them I got. I'm selling this entire pattern collection now of about 180 coins. And I'm pretty sure that the owner who has since passed away of these coins bought these in 1962 at the Cox Collection sale. So these are these are obviously Judd patterns, yes. uh, different types and different rarities. These are actually quite rare to begin They're, with. Patterns by definition are rare. So what, what do these holders tell us about the sophistication of the collectors of the period? Well, this guy was very dedicated. He was very dedicated to his uh, to his collection and he put the, you know, he put special care into it. Uh, and but most, most collectors, if they had these coins, maybe they would put them into a plastic holder or something like that. But more often than not, they were in envelopes or something like that. But this guy really cared. He, he wanted to exhibit his coins, and, they, and he did. Very cool. So what is the estimated value of these pieces? Uh, the, these uh, four are probably 15, 20,000, something like that total. Wow, amazing. Thanks, yeah. thanks very much, Julian. You're welcome. Okay.